Hello everyone. Welcome to our second official YouTube video. My name is Nicholas Ng, and I am a super GM and the future president of the Earl Haig Chess Club. And I know it's been a while since our first YouTube video, but we're finally back. Because of our last video's incredible success, we received a large amount of feedback and requests for another video on the Vienna system. So today's video will be the sequel to that video. Let's get right into it. So, just as a quick refresher, in the last video, I covered the Vienna Gambit, which happens after the move e4, e5, then we play knight c3 instead of knight f3, this is the Vienna game. And then after black plays the natural move knight f6, we go f4, the Vienna Gambit. And in that video, I showed you what happens if black accepts the gambit, which is just losing after the move e5, because now the knight can't go anywhere, it has to go back. So. If you haven't seen that video, or you just need to remember it again, just check the link in the description. Now, from that video, someone asked us, what, what, would, what are you supposed to do against black's best move in this position? And the best move in this position for black is the move d5, which I did not cover in the last video. So today, I'm going to show you what to do against it. So the reason why d5 is such a good move for black is because he's immediately striking back in the center while we're off pushing this pawn. So now we have to memorize a few moves. So first we're going to take this pawn on e5, attacking the knight. So now the knight can actually jump here because it is defended by a pawn. So we're not taking this knight. We're not going to take it. So here I'm actually going to recommend the move queen to f3. So right now we're threatening to take the knight and after pawn takes we take again, winning a pawn. So the most common move here you will face is knight takes knight. And here I actually recommend, we're not going to take with the queen, we're actually going to take with the b pawn. And this might look a little bit weird, but our ultimate goal is to go d4. And if we get d4, we'll basically get a huge center. So now, black can do a lot of things, but let's say they just go bishop to e7, trying to develop and get castled. So now we're going to go d4, right? We're taking a huge center space. So now black can actually set up in a variety of different ways, but here's our main plan. We are going to get this bishop to d3. On d3, this bishop will stare at black's king side and will help out with an attack. Then we're going to get this knight over here to e2. And on e2, it can either go to f4 or g3, adding another piece to the attack. Then once we castle, we're going to have a rook Oh, on the f file and it'll help add more pressure so let's take so this might how it might look so after black castles we play the move bishop to d3 targeting the pawn let's say they go knight c6 now we go knight e2 and let's say bishop e6 and now we castle and if you look at the computer evaluation we're already plus two we we have a very nice position we have targets here, we have pressure here. This bishop can sometimes go here if this bishop isn't here, or it could come to f4. This knight can rotate and come into the assault later. So now you know how to play the full entire Vienna Gambit. From this video and our last, you know what to do if they accept the Gambit, which is losing by force, what to do if they defend with a pawn, what to do if they defend with a knight, and what to do if they play the best move at d5 in this position. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and in our next video, we will cover what to do against black's most se second most popular move on move 2, so that would be knight c6, and here you can't really play the Vienna Gambit, but if you want to find out what to do against that, you'll have to wait for an upcoming video. So thank you for watching, and have a good one.